Hey everyone, it's Nightlight9, and this video is going to be my banner review for the newest Final Fantasy VI uh, crossover slash collab, whatever you want to call it, uh, banner featuring Sephiroth, and I am pretty darn excited. Um, actually kind of having a little bit of mixed feelings over what to do on this banner, and I'm going to get into just why. So, coming in, the first thing we're going to look at is... I guess we'll look at the outfit because that's what I usually do. And honestly, I think this looks really sleek. Um, I love that they did the Edgar ponytail on him. Uh, it looks really, really good. This is up in my like top two probably outfits for Sephiroth. Maybe his six month anniversary outfit being the other one that I would put in contention for, you know, top two. Looks really good. What does it do? Well, first, it gives physical and magical ward. So 15% physical and magical defense and water blade arcanum. And this is amazing because Sephiroth doesn't have this. So one of the reasons I think this particular costume and weapon is so good is because it's on Sephiroth. Uh, you know, we can't deny that there's four really major characters in this game as far as gear, and that's Cloud, Tifa, Aerith, and Sephiroth. So anytime anything comes out for one of these characters, I think it always deserves a little bit of extra attention because they can already do so much, it makes them already so usable. And therefore, when you get offered a costume for one of them, it, it just makes it that much more likely that it, you're going to be equipping it because you're going to be running those characters. And so I have to give that nod here. Uh, the fact that it gives both physical and magical defense, you know, one of the things we saw a lot with Arcanums is they were geared toward, you know, usually doing one kind of damage or, you know, one kind of setup, physical or magical. The Arcanum itself doesn't do that, but the second R ability usually favored something along those lines. I love that it's defense here instead of attack because we already have a lot of ways to buff attack, but defense is always something very important. The fact that it doesn't favor either one means that you can equip this anytime you're needing Sephiroth to do water damage. That's very big. The other thing to note here is that now Sephiroth has access to both physical and magical water. So Edgar's Coiled Blade, here we go. Looking at it, we can see it's just pure damage, pure DPS here. We've got magic water damage and then a multiplier of 1.2 as long as there's a debuff on the target. You won't always be able to guarantee a debuff on the target, but I would say overwhelming majority of times you're going to have one of those. So I'm going to kind of assume this is going to be happening the majority of the time. So that's how I'm going to evaluate the weapon. The next thing we always do here is look at the Tom Rom card for OB1. And here, this is a weapon, first one in a couple of banners now, where we do care about taking it from 5 star to OB1. You get a pretty good increase here. Again, because of the multiplier, it's not just a flat 100%. It's not just 520 to 620. It's more like 624 to 744. So there's actually about a 124% increase in the C ability damage as long as you're getting that multiplier. As for the rest, obviously these stats over here for physical and magical attack are going to be nice to have. And the R abilities are, you know, not as much of a deal except for water potency plus 15. If you're main handing, that is kind of a thing. Moving forward to OB6, you can see 780% magic water damage and Tapping out at 940%, which is the damage that the big DPS weapons for elemental damage do. And it's kind of funny because, you know, if you look at it from 5 star all the way up, you can basically say that this multiplier kind of takes it to the next level. So, you know, here we have 520, which with the multiplier is going to be 624. And we know that at OB1, it's going to do 620% base. That 620 when multiplied going to be 744 which is a bit under 780 but you get the idea and 780 when you multiply it by 1.2 you're going to get 936 which is almost dead on the base number for ob10 
and then obviously it'll be 10 it's 1128 percent damage with that multiplier those are big numbers and so i do think even at the 620 with this multiplier hitting for 744 percent that's big i that's quite big if you're able to get it to ob6 i mean i think that is going to be perfectly great for most people hitting it over 900 percent with that multiplier it's a big deal but i will talk about kind of the disadvantages of this weapon which there's really only one maybe one and a half um but first we'll go through our abilities uh pretty standard looking at ob10 you can see 4639 that is as standard as it gets we've got magic attack boosts and then a triangle sigil boost always great to have the extra sigil boost there so it's it's a very very solid weapon the downsides of this weapon that I can think of are the biggest, most obvious one is that it's a limited weapon. The fact that it's a crossover specific weapon means we we can't guarantee when the next time is we will have a chance to pull for this. So you have to keep that in mind. Um, the other downside, maybe if you wanna call this a downside is that this is likely not going to help you clear Ramu EX2. Uh, I mean, it's not really helpful for EX1 compared to a physical water weapon, which kind of sucks, uh, but it's really, that's ultimately kind of a minor thing. The other positives of this, though, is that Sephiroth is innately good with magic damage anyway. So getting a big hitting mag magic water damage weapon, I think, is also a plus. His six month anniversary weapon, for example, you know, very similar to what we saw with the one year stuff for Cloud and Tifa etc giving that uh you know the boost magic attack all and everything else and the, the boost magic ability potency so i think there's going to be a lot of different ways to use this hell you could even pair it with tempest and have the breach plus the water damage and be able to do physical and magical water damage if necessary uh it's good but the ultimate question becomes how good is it as far as considering or keeping in mind that it's a limited weapon that's where I'm having a, a hard time. I don't really know. I can tell you this. Looking at the stamp card, we obviously know page one is stingy. Page two is where things start to get good, and then it falls back off afterwards. So, you know, you got to do what you got to do with that. I want this costume. I use Sephiroth a lot. I don't have him set up for water damage right now, and that makes it a little bit tough for me. Uh, knowing that I only have 43,000 crystals plus the one free 10 pull they gave us, uh, that, you know, I'm on a limited stock here. And I can tell you, if you don't have any water, really, or any magical water, I think it's probably better to just start working on Tifa, especially if you have some of her anniversary gear. So if you were a newer player that started, you know, a little bit before or right around anniversary... If you went in on Tifa, it probably would be easier to work on her water setup. I think overall her water setup is a little bit better. Uh, if we look at Tifa's weapons, because I went really hard on, on Tifa's water setup, but showing kind of what she has. She does have a water Arcanum. Uh, it doesn't have the other same R ability that Sephiroth's has, but it's still a water Arcanum. And if we look at the uh, bunny gloves, you can see it caps out at 872% magic water damage. That might be with a brand on for me. Uh, in fact, I'm yeah positive that it is. So it's a little bit below this. In fact, there we go, 850%, which is still pretty good. It also increases magic attack every time you use it, stacking all the way up to high. The water potency is a little bit low, but that's okay. Uh, it has a sigil boost. And so it's it's a good weapon for magic water damage. Um, not quite as strong as Sephiroth's uh, as far as overall percentage. Uh, and the fact that it buffs magic attack on its own is actually pretty useful. But then you also have access to feathered gloves here. And you can see at OB6, you know, you have a magic defense decrease, potency mid to a single enemy, and you have the water damage increase on yourself high potency and it lasts for a pretty good amount of time and 
basically that's a really strong kit for magical water damage and so you know i i guess what i'm saying is if you had to be frugal with your crystals i don't think that sephiroth here on the limited banner is the way to go because if you can't get it to ob6 well you might not be able to pull for this for another year or another six months and who knows where your crystals are going to be when you get that opportunity and if you get that opportunity if you compare that to somebody like Tifa, those neither one of those are limited weapons, so you could theoretically just get those to OB-10 by working on them slowly. And I think if you have, you know, Bunny Gloves at OB-10 is going to do slightly less damage uh, as far as, you know, 850% versus the 936 for OB-6 on this. But if you also had high potency magic attack on her because of those same weapons without having to use somebody else to buff her, I would say that probably is pretty even, if not maybe slightly better for Tifa. And that's if you get this OB6. If you can't get it to OB6, it's just not quite as good. So I would keep that in mind. I would really think about what it is that you need to go for. I can tell you, for me, I want to get the, the Arcanum because I use Sephiroth and there's, you know, the potential for me to use it. Um... But I, I don't know. It, it, it kind of depends how many copies of this I get along the way. I don't expect to get more than the guaranteed, to be honest. I would love to be able to have it at OB1 just to have him starting on the water stuff. Tempest down here is not a weapon that I have many copies of. I think I have it at, I want to say, either 5 star or OB1. But it would be something I would be working on, and I have wishlisted it for that purpose. So that's what I think at the moment... Uh, I, I am pretty excited about this. However, anybody who was playing back when Final Fantasy IX collab came out, I think um, one thing that we notice here is that the strength of these weapons is not the same as the strength from Final Fantasy IX weapons. And although it, that might make it a little bit less exciting as far as the banners, plus the fact that they're doing single banners and who knows, it may be just four straight single banners versus the two, two, and one that we got during Final Fantasy IX. It also allows people to not have to feel like they're missing out if they don't get this stuff. So really, I think, you know, whales, it's not going to matter either way. They're going to pull for what they want. They're going to get it to the level they want to get it to. Um, you know, these still are strong. They're just not you know, groundbreaking like Final Fantasy IX weapons were. But for the free-to-play players, and because of the, the fact that this is limited, because of the fact that this is coming shortly after everybody blew most of, if not all, of their crystals on the one-year anniversary, I think that's kind of good. I think that they're focusing more on some aesthetic stuff, some lore stuff, tying it to, you know, what you could do in Final Fantasy VI, and that's perfectly fine without making people feel like they have to have these or have to get them, you know, pressured to get OB6 or OB10 when the crystal stockpiles are low. And so, you know, very similarly here, this weapon is good and it's really good because it's on Aerith. I think this is very similar. If this weapon and gear were on most other characters, I probably wouldn't care very much. If it wasn't on one of the main characters, it wouldn't matter, but because Sephiroth is a main character and he is featured in many of my lineups, I do feel compelled to get that uh, costume. The fact that they gave us a free 10 draw, that definitely helps. It'd be nice if I could get three or four stamps on it. But anyway, that's what I think of this banner. I would be very curious to know your thoughts. Uh, another thing that I typically always point out is this is available till December 4th. So don't feel like you have to pull right now if you're inclined to pull. If you're sitting like me on 43,000 and you're thinking, okay, I'm only maybe guaranteed to be able to take one banner to the costume, possibly two if I get really lucky and maybe you even have a little bit more crystals than me or whatever. But if you're in that limited scenario, it does not hurt you to just wait and see what else is here. In fact, that's probably the very smartest play you could make in case you actually find a weapon that you think is worth taking to OB6. So, 
those are my final thoughts. Uh, can't wait to hear yours. I hope you guys are excited for this. I actually am, am quite a bit more excited for this one than I was for Aerith's. Subscribe for future content if you're not already. If you are, I appreciate each and every one of your support. And as always, thanks for watching.